obviously you guys have spent the last 48 hours and beyond preparing for this thing. Do you feel like the state is as prepared as it could be for this thing? Oh, without question. I mean, you know, this is something where we monitor this stuff. Uh, we did the state of emergency before it was an even organized storm. And, uh, and these guys know what they're doing. We have a plan. We always try to figure out what we did last time, what else could we do. So, for example, one thing I mentioned at the press conference, uh, we're deploying these, these uh, flood prevention devices around the sub utility substations because the view is, hey, the water's going to go up. If we can prevent some substations from being flooded, that means it's going to be less people lose power or at least easier to restore the power. And, of course, there's up to 17,000 linemen that are going to be available to help with power restoration efforts. So, you know, we know the drill on this. Uh, yeah, we were very proactive, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to, to help Floridians uh, who are in need. It sounds like you're really prioritizing power. I mean, obviously, last time when we had Adalia, this was a rural part of the state, and there was a lot of concern because the power lines were down in different spots, and you didn't have a whole bunch of homes that were out power, but you had a lot of homes that had power out, and it took a while to restore them because you had a lot of line down. Well, even that, though, I mean, you, the massive amount of debris because of the winds, you know, that was a very rapid restoration effort considering it was almost a Category 4 storm. Uh, th these winds are not going to be as strong as Idalia, but there's going to be so much water that that's just going to impact a lot of things that are going around. Now, of course, our first priority is any type of search and rescue that would be needed. So we have teams stationed. I have the National Guard, the State Guard, Florida Fish and Wildlife, local law enforcement. They're there. If some, there's massive flooding around someone's house and they need to be rescued, that's going to be the first thing we can do. But for the broader community, uh, we want to make sure that the services are back up and running. That makes everything else you need to do easier. And I spoke to the, the mayor of Tallahassee uh, earlier today, and uh, I, I mentioned Hurricane Hermine. He wasn't mayor. I wasn't governor. But, uh, you know, there were people in Tallahassee who were without power for weeks on a, on, a, on a relatively weak hurricane, and there wasn't the effort to get, get the restoration quick. And he, he, agreed, he agreed, you know, he's already talking to utilities. He's going to accept mutual aid. We're going to be working together uh, because we do want get, to get the power restored. Do you feel like the property insurance market's ready for this thing? Well, I mean, if you look at the numbers, I mean, we've had uh, eight companies come out. We did reforms at the end of 2022. Uh, people are now writing articles about 30-some uh, states have had uh, higher increases in premiums than Florida has since we did those reforms. Uh, the average uh, rate that's been filed over the last 90 days, about 1.9% increase. That's less than the rate of inflation. Uh, people are putting more capital in. You know, you see State Farm in California, they're doing a 50% increase. Here, they basically did uh, similar rates as as, as last year, reinsurance uh, was was down from the year before. So the market is in much better shape uh, here in the summer of 2024 than it was in the summer of 2022 when we were hit by Hurricane Ian. Anything else that you think is important to get out there? Just um, this is going to be a lot of water, and it, it may be something that it passes over you, uh, and there may be some, some, some standing water. That, of course, is something to, to be concerned about. But you could also see flooding in the days after because you have rivers, you have a bunch of different bodies of water that are at different levels. They rise differently. So it may not just be a one-day event. So just listen to your, your local officials. We'll be providing updates throughout this. You know, most of the models said it's going to go through southeast Georgia into the Carolinas, and, and maybe even they are going to get more dropped on them than we get in Florida. But there's also a possibility that it could turn around and come back, uh, go west. So, so that's possible. We hope that doesn't happen. So just stay tuned and understand this may not just be uh, a one-day event where it passes through and then that's it. There may be uh, flooding and there even may be some storms that come on the back end if the storm does turn around. Thank you for your time. Thank you.